A couple of things when you first generate one of these, you'll note that uh, uh, you know it. Wabbit will go and, and set the, the column widths. So it goes and says, okay, this title width is going to be this big because I've got a title down here called Dr. Strangelove that stretches out. So it will fit it to the, the biggest value it can find. The other thing you'll note is, hey, I, you know, I brought uh, title, role, last name, first name, and year, but year's not showing up and that first name's getting kind of cut off. That's because of the default uh, uh, margins. So if I want to make my margin smaller and increase the amount of space I can report it on, I can do that just by grabbing these margin bars and stretching them out. And now I've got uh, all the information I'm uh, you know, looking for available. Now you'll note there are a number of areas on this report. For example, we have a header, we've got two headers, we've got two footers. Um, we also have our main area here. I can double click on any of these to make changes. So although I have all the info I want, I don't really like the way it looks. So I'm going to double click and bring up the properties window for my detail or my results. Now there are a couple of things I can change here. You'll note I have a header font. It's kind of small. I'm going to change that. And I'm going to bring it up to a font size of 10. Uh, I can also change the body font if I want, but I'm kind of happy with that, so I'll leave it alone. Uh, null string just says if there's no value in that field, what do I put out there? And it will default in this case to null in brackets. I could leave it as a blank, I could put zero in, whatever I feel like. Background just lets me set the background color for the, the report. So if you really want to clobber your inkjet, you can go ahead and set it to whatever color you want. The really neat stuff, though, is down here in this column information. The default titles, column titles, are drawn from the field names in the table. And they're often very relevant to whoever designed the table. But when you're generating a report, you oftentimes want to make it uh, a little more descriptive. So in this case, rather than title, I'm going to call it movie. Rather than role played, I'm going to call it call this column character. And then here, you know, last name, first name, I'm just going to say actor. And I'm going to leave first name blank because I don't need to put anything there. And instead of year, I'm just going to say released. This is really what it is. So if I go ahead and click OK here, you'll note that Wabbit has now changed my columns to uh, what I asked them to be, something a little more descriptive. Now, I'm still not really happy because it's really hard to pick out where one movie ends and the next begins. So, you know, for example, I've got Apocalypse Now, sandwiched between Annie Hall and Back to the Future, and it's a little hard to see, uh, you know, which actors are in which. So I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm actually going to break on column. And what that says is when the value of movie changes, so when I've hit the last Apocalypse Now and I'm going to Back to the Future, put a break in so I can, I can space it out and it's a little easier to see. And when I do that, you'll note that it inserts a line break. So now it's very easy to see, for example, in Apocalypse Now, who the characters were, who the actors were that played each of those characters, and then you can see the break to Back to the Future uh, quite clearly. Now, I've got the format looking the way I want. I've got it uh, more or less the way I'd, I like it, but I've got to put a bit, bit more of a descriptive header in. This is the page header that shows up every time. So when I double click on, on the page header sp space, it will let me go ahead and change this. So I'm going to say, you know, rather than saying header apostrophe, I'm going to say movies and actors. And the font's kind of small, so I'm going to jack that up and I'm going to bold face it so it really stands up. Heck, I'll make it bold and italic. And I click OK and it's now changed that over. Now, I, right now, the other header section defaults to a, a, a time on when this report was generated. Um, you know what? I don't want that. I actually you know, want to put in a logo. I want to put the company logo in here because it's important to put it on every page. So I have a uh, add image or insert graphic capability that I can do. So I can just click and add that in and I'm just going to track down a GIF or a PDF that I want to use. Oh, here we are. SQL Power GIF. I'm going to open that up. One little thing that, that I found uh, Wabbit likes to do, it's a bit indiscriminate where it drops the, the image down, so you might have to have a little look around, but once you find it, you can just drag it and drop it where you want it. Now, we have a little bit of a problem here. 
uh, you'll note that my SQL Power logo is just kind of going over the edge of the page, so I need more uh, space at the top. Again, to do that, I just find this header uh, border and I pull it down, and I now have more room for my logo. And I also can, you know, increase the title if I want. One other thing I want to show is, is if you look at uh, the footer here, we've got a page uh, count, so one of 20, let's say. Uh, this was created by inserting variables. If you click on the variable button, you can put in things like the date and time, the page number, the total number of pages, who generated the report, and as well what version of, of Wabbit you're using. So you can clean up the report so that people know when the report was run, how big it is, and likewise anytime you want. If you want to insert the Wabbit version, um, you can do that as well. Finally, now that you've created it, well, you can save it. So we can always um, you know, save our, our project. Let's put something in there just to get it in. Uh, we can also print this out. So we can generate the report and print it out on the printer. We can generate the report to PDF, and we can email it to somebody if we'd like. Uh, and finally, what's really, really cool is we can export the layout, the, the metadata about this, this report to a Wabbit file, and then I can mail that to somebody else. And that's really useful because, you know, I may run the report today, and in a week's time the data's changed. So I can send the report to somebody else, and they can go ahead and run it themselves anytime they want. So I can create it and very quickly send it to somebody else, and they can run it. Or, you know, if they're, if they're a Wabbit user, uh, they can go ahead and, and make changes. Say, you know, they may not care about the, the year. They might care about uh, who wrote the screenplay, so they'll change it around that way. So there's a lot that can be done with, with uh, Wabbit in terms of sharing reports and how, how to generate reports. So that's really what I wanted to show. It's a very quick demo of Wabbit. It delves into about 5% of what the product can do. I encourage you to download it and try it out and, and drill in deeper on what can be done. Um, it is, as I mentioned, part of our open source offering at SQL Power. We have two other open source products uh, that are available on our website. Uh, Power Architect is a data and process modeling tool. It's somewhat similar to Erwin. Uh, it's available as an open source download with no charge. Um, it has been uh, actually implemented over 160,000 times now uh, by the community and it will allow you to do things like data modeling and uh, process flow modeling. Uh, has integration to a number of different uh, databases so you can actually generate tables as you go. Uh, the DQ Guru is our master data management and data cleansing tool and uh, it uh, allows you to do such things as deduping, uh, data correction, address correction for Canadian addresses and that's to Canada Post standards uh, and uh, various other uh, cleansing, uh, cleansing and profiling opportunities. And where can you find these things? Well, sqlpower.ca is our website. Uh, you can download any of our open source products there. Uh, you can also join and participate in the user forums for any of our open source offerings. Uh, you can get support from our developers through the forums or from the community through the forums as well. And there's a bunch of other stuff in there. There's blogs and uh, methodologies and the like that you're welcome to have a look at and use. Finally, if you don't have the time to, uh, uh, to build up your reports or build up your data warehouse, SQL Power can help. We've been uh, helping organizations with uh, business intelligence and data warehousing now for over 20 years. Uh, we have uh, in-depth experience with pretty much every major uh, uh, BI tool and database out there. And uh, you know our slogan says it all, we never fail, neither will you. We've uh, been successful at this for over 20 years now and we'll be successful with you as well. If you need to reach us, please uh, hit, uh, come to the website. All of our contact information is there. I want to thank you for uh, sitting through uh, our demo. Hope that uh, you found it useful and that you'll download our product and give it a shot. Uh, again, my name is John Kemp, uh, Principal with SQL Power Consulting Group, and thank you.